Hey guys, it's Aaron and Bryce. We're here again because there's another Fusion update to bring you. Let's take a look. In this update, one of the first things you will notice that changed in Fusion 360 is the color of the background when using the sketch grid. Previously, when entering a sketch, the sketch grid would display with a gray gradient, which made it look super foggy. Now we have cleaned up the grayness of the sketch grid while sketching. In addition, we have added the ability to measure sketch arcs. Now you will be presented with the length, radius, and diameter while using the measure tool in the sketch environment. Next, when I have a lot of components and I do a section view of the assembly, I will get a different color for the section cap color for each individual component. This will help visualize touching or intersecting components when creating a section view analysis. Next, let's move on and create a tangent construction plane. Previously, I got an angle to alter the tangent plane, but I didn't know what the angle was referring to. In this update, we can select a reference plane or face and input an angle off the reference to drive our tangent plane. This next enhancement is one of my favorites in this Fusion 360 update. Now we can apply offsets to the start or end conditions for an extrude. For example, I have a sketch on the face which I would like to use to extrude holes on the opposite flange. I can change the start condition to from object and then select the face. Now I can key in the distance to drive the hole pattern cut through the flange. Not only does this work on flat faces, but the extrude will offset on curved faces as well. In this next example, I want to extrude this part number so it contours to the curved face. I can start by starting this extrude. Rather than changing the start condition, we can change the extent condition to object. Now we can select the curved face. Notice by default it is going to join with a zero in the offset. Let's change the offset so the extrude runs into the housing. Now the operation will automatically change to cut and follow the contour of the curved face. Now this next enhancement will help everyone who has to use assemblies. In this update we have added the ability to apply XY offsets. Previously when creating a joint, the Z offset was the only direction we could change. Now in Fusion 360 we get a triad to move the part in all three directions. In this case, I want the part to sit down in the vise by half an inch. So I can zero out the X and Z offset and use the Y offset to move the part down in the vise. I would also like to move the sliding jaw to the part. So let's create one more joint. Notice I use the same value for the Y offset. Once I hit OK, Fusion 360 will solve both joints and sit the part tightly a half inch down in the vise. That was a great demonstration of some awesome capabilities. Thanks, Bryce. What was your favorite? Man, those XY offsets to all the joints. I showed you only at rigid joints, but you actually could do the XY offsets for any type of joint, whether that be Revolute, Cylindrical, Slider, all of them. Good stuff, man. Well, let's see what's next. A great way to interrogate assemblies is to adjust the visibility of geometry, either by hiding or changing the opacity. And while Fusion has had the ability to see through components for some time, the ability to adjust body opacity is new to the October update. This would help considerably in this case as the main body of this valve is just that, a body. On that note, another way to visualize components is with the color component cycling, one of my top 5 keyboard shortcuts in a recent quick tip. But what a lot of users found was that they were toggling it on accidentally. So going forward, we've changed this shortcut to shift in. Speaking of changing, Let's change gears and turn our attention to the simulation workspace. Here you'll find some of the most significant advancements of this release. Hitting solve will bring this to the forefront. Immediately, you're met with a new interface, and the reason for this is simple but powerful. Cloud solve. We talked about this in the Fusion forecast, a must read for all Fusion users. But let's reiterate why this is so huge. For starters, you'll have the ability to solve multiple studies at one time. Once you send these off, the immeasurable power of the cloud will solve these at rates standalone computers simply cannot. And unloading this burden will encourage you to crank up the quality, test many more instances, and the best part, once it's set into the cloud, you can continue working on other tasks. Anyway, back to where I was, scrolling through the list, I see and select the studies to run, but one of these is telling me it's not ready. Great to know, but also easy to ignore if I want to quickly send all studies that are ready. However, I want to fix this, so I'll click Repair. In the resulting dialog, I'll get a rundown of what information is missing, and armed with that knowledge, I'll go to Add the Missing Constraints. 
This is made easier because constraints can be accessed with the keyboard shortcut now. C. And just like that, I should be ready to run. So I'll access the solve options again. The solve options will default to cloud solve. And even though that's the case, it's important to remember that local solves are an option and sometimes more efficient for simple problems. Anyway, I can select all the studies by clicking here or select individually again. And once that's done, I'll get an idea of how many cloud credits this will be. Once I click solve, the problems will begin uploading to the cloud and I can go work on something else. As results start to come back, you'll be informed with a notification. But here you can see all the studies have completed. So I'll close this dialog and begin digging into the results. Additional results can be accessed from Fusion Team or within Fusion from the job status window. And with all that completed in record time, I can move on to the next part. I'll turn on model display with the adjusted Control or Command L option rather than M, which had conflicts with the Mac OS environment. Back in the model, the next thing I'd like to do is make a drawing for the hand wheel. To do this, I'll use the intuitive new drawing creation option found in the workspace switcher, a huge improvement. And finally, I want to adjust this drawing so that the hand wheel spokes are vertical and horizontal rather than at this odd angle. I'll use the new rotate option, which will enable me to make this adjustment easily and will maintain the already assigned dimensions. All I need to do now is reposition a couple of them and I'm good. Man, that cloud solve is freaking amazing. I can't believe we could leverage the cloud to solve these really long simulations. Yeah, to be able to offload these time intensive calculations onto someone else's computer is freaking awesome. Huge game changer. Hey, Autodesk University is right around the corner. There's gonna be a ton of Fusion 360 classes, exhibits, ton of people. Best of all, we're gonna be there, so come say hi to us. Hey, and stay, stay tuned. There's gonna be a lot of updates coming up right around the corner. Cheers.